How's it going, car people? It's Lucas here, back with another car review. Today, I present to you this 2014 Volkswagen Charan TDI SE. As always, I will start it up, show you the engine, as well as show you around the interior and the exterior of the car. So, here's the key. It's your typical Volkswagen-style switchblade key with your lock, unlock, and trunk release. So, let's go ahead and get started. If you hold down the unlock button, you can actually roll down all four windows at the same time and open up the sunroof as a vent. And to roll the windows up and close the sunroof, just hold down the lock button. Very useful feature on hot days. This Chiron is finished off in a night blue exterior and comes paired with a gray cloth interior, along with the optional six-speed manual transmission. So, let's go ahead and cut on the headlights, fog lights, and hazards. All four windows are fully automatic. So, let's go ahead and check out the exterior of the Chiron. The Volkswagen Chiron is a multi-purpose vehicle produced by German automaker Volkswagen since 1995. Since then, the Chiron has seen two generations. The first generation, the Type 7M, ran from 1995 to 2010, and the second generation, the Type 7N, ran from 2010 to 2020. Both generations of the Chiron are identical to the Seat Alhambra, but the first generation was also identical to the first generation Ford Galaxy. The 7N Chiron is based on the B7 Volkswagen Passat and made its debut at the 2010 Geneva Motor Show, with its sibling, the Seat Alhambra, being announced one month later. Sales for both cars began in September 2010. The biggest change to the 7N Chiron was it having sliding rear doors instead of hinged rear doors like the 7M. The 7N Chiron is larger and more spacious than the 7M. There is also an option of a 5-seater and a 7-seater version. The 7N Volkswagen Chiron was officially discontinued in early 2020 after two generations and 25 years of production. For the 2021 model year, the Chiron will be sold as a crossover instead of an MPV. The 7N Chiron is available with five different trim levels, S, SE, SL1, Executive, and SEL. On the exterior of this Chiron, you'll find projector headlights, body-colored turn signal mirrors, body-colored door handles, chrome trim around the windows, front and rear parking sensors, a rear fog light, a double-tip single-exit exhaust, and 16-inch five-spoke alloy wheels on Continental Conti Premium Contact 21560R16 tires. As far as dimensions, length is 190.9 inches, width is 75.7 inches, height is 71.3 inches with a 115-inch wheelbase. Curb weight is 3,911 pounds. This Chiron is powered by a 2-liter, dual-overhead cams, 16 valves, turbo diesel inline 4-cylinder with common rail direct injection. It produces 140 horsepower at 4200 RPM and 236 pound-feet of torque from 1750 to 2500 RPM. It does 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 10.9 seconds and has a top speed of 194 kilometers an hour. With an 18.4 gallon fuel tank, it is estimated to get 35 miles per gallon city, 49 highway, and 43 combined. In liters per 100 kilometers, that is 6.8 city, 4.8 highway, and 5.5 combined. The Chiron is front wheel drive. You do get a 10-way adjustable driver's seat, partially powered and partially manual. You have manual height adjustment, manual slide, right over there as well as power recline and four-way power lumbar adjustment. The front seats do also have storage compartments. The door panel materials are mostly rubberized. You do have some fake carbon fiber trim right over here, aluminum interior door handle, 
power windows, power locks, power mirrors right over here. The mirrors are also heated by the way. You do have your child lock right over here, as well as storage down below and a speaker. To the left of the steering column, you have your headlight switch, as well as panel dim. So, let's go ahead and hop inside, do a few revs, and see how she sounds. It does have a 2600 RPM rev limiter. This Chiron comes with dual zone automatic climate control. The knob in the middle is your fan speed. The outer two knobs are the individual temperature controls for the driver and passenger. You can also see the temperature right here on the little displays. And whenever you change something on the climate controls, it will show up on the radio display as you can see. You can see the different fan speed, different zones, the temperatures, stuff like that. Here are the different zones by the way. You also have front and rear defrost as well as AC, recycling, stuff like that. Overall very simple to use. And by clicking the rear button, you can then control the air vents in the back. Rear passengers don't have any climate controls, by the way. The rear air vents can only be controlled from up here. Up here on the dashboard is a storage compartment. Over here, you do have your radio controls. You have the power button for the radio, which doubles as the volume knob. Seek track buttons, you can scroll through different folders. You got your tuning knob. You can go to your radio menu right here, and then you can just scroll like that via the buttons right over here. This is not a touch screen, by the way, as you can probably see. By clicking the buttons, you can go through various info. You can see your Bluetooth audio as well. You can even go to the display settings as well. You can set background illumination, stuff like that. Overall, very simple to use. And if you click the radio button, you can switch between AM and FM. If we go over here to media, you can switch between auxiliary as well as CD. Overall, very simple to use. You also have a shortcut to the sound settings right here, as well as the CD eject button. Below the climate controls, you have your traction control, the button for your auto start stop system, parking sensors, tire pressure, passenger airbag, a little bit of storage. This Chiron comes with a six speed manual transmission. For reverse, push down all the way to the left and up. Upon shifting into reverse, the rear parking sensors will automatically turn on and the diagram will show up on the radio display. And upon shifting out of reverse, it actually will stay on. In order to turn it off, you have to press the parking sensor button. And there you go. Cup holders, electronic parking brake with auto hold function, a little bit more storage for like coins, 12 volt power outlet, the typical Volkswagen adjustable armrest, also made of leather, storage underneath, USB port, auxiliary input, and another 12 volt power outlet. You can see more of the fake carbon fiber trim right here. Glove box, nice and felt lined with all your owner's literature. You do get a three spoke design, leather wrapped steering wheel with nice and tight power steering, sport grips at 10 and two, stitching on the inside. Very loud horn. On the left, audio controls, as well as Bluetooth phone and voice recognition. And over here, you have the controls for the display on the gauge cluster, which I will show in a second. Turn signal stock, as well as high beams, cruise control down there, wiper stock. The steering wheel is also manually tilting and telescoping. On the gauge cluster, tachometer, engine temperature gauge, speedo, fuel gauge. You do have your trip reset right over here. 
And then here is the display that I was talking about earlier. The display itself will always show the clock, the outside temperature, odometer, this Chiron has 102,000 kilometers on it, as well as the trip meter. As I said before, these buttons are what you use to control the display. You can go through oil temperature, see a digital speedometer, speed, instantaneous, um, distance driven, range, instantaneous fuel consumption, average fuel consumption, as well as the driving time. All of the info that I just scrolled through, you do via these two buttons right here. With these two buttons, you can scroll through this, and then you can also view the settings, like time, language, stuff like that. Use the OK button to select something, and then right down below here is the back button. You do get a grip handle for the driver, a sun visor with a vanity mirror and light. You have a manually dimming rearview mirror in this one. Here's your front interior lights, sunglass container, as well as the typical Volkswagen dial back sunroof. These two buttons right here actually control the shade. Just hold it down and it will go back. Just like so. And then you use the dial to control how far you want the sunroof open. You can have it fully open and then just turn it all the way back the other way to close it. And then just press this button to bring the shade back. All right. So let's go ahead and shut it down and we'll move on to the back seat. As mentioned before, sliding rear doors on this generation Chiron are standard. Power sliding rear doors are also optional, by the way, on the higher trim levels. And you can see that it is not a bench seat back here. There are actually three separate seats. And all three of them do slide, by the way. For the outer two seats, there's this little knob right down here that you have to push all the way down in order to slide them, which is hard to do with one hand. For the middle seat, there's this little bar that you would use to slide. This lever right here actually allows you to fold down the seat flat. If that seat was farther forward or that headrest was down, they would fold flat. And this lever right here actually folds the seat forward in order to give you access to the third row of seats, which this vehicle is equipped with. We'll go back there in a little bit. You also need to pull the lever back in order to put the seats back in place. Don't know why, but that's just the way it is. You can also see that there are ISOFIX child seat anchors. We'll go ahead and hop inside. On the door, you do also have a bottle holder. You also have sunshades for the second row passengers. Now the driver's seat is in its farthest back position and I'm just over six feet tall. And you can see that I actually have a very nice amount of leg room and also a pretty nice amount of headroom, despite it having a sunroof. So really, it's pretty nice here in the back seat of the Chiron. I also have plenty of room to put my feet under the seat, so I would definitely be very comfortable here on a long trip. You do also have these fold-out tray tables on the backs of the front seats with a cutout for a cup holder, as well as pockets right here, 12 volt power outlet, and down here are some hidden cup holders. You got grip handles for the second row passengers, coat hooks, as well as interior lights. And here are the rear air vents, which as I said before, can only be controlled from the climate control in the front. Overall, not bad. All right, so that's it for the second row of seats. Let's go ahead and check out the third row of seats. As I said before, there's this lever that you need to pull here in order to flip the seat forward and give you access to the third row of seats. They do also slide forward, by the way, just in case you are a little bit taller, like myself. Let's go ahead and hop inside. Now, obviously, the third row of seats is quite a bit less spacious than the second row of seats because uh, the third row of seats do sit higher than the second row of seats. I do have less headroom back here and knee room. Yeah, it's not optimal. Obviously, for comfort, you can also pull up the headrests. But overall, I would not recommend people my size to sit back here. More of the interior lights, grip handles and air vents back here as well. There are the seat belts. And this right here is where a cargo cover would go. Obviously, it is not inside the vehicle right now. Otherwise, I would not be able to put up the third row of seats. 
But yeah, that's pretty much it for the third row of seats. Let's go ahead and check out trunk space. While the Sherban has very little cargo space with the third row of seats in place, it is still more than what you typically see in an MPV. With the third row of seats folded, cargo space is 10.6 cubic feet. Fold the second row of seats down and cargo space expands to a whopping 81.1 cubic feet, which can easily haul some large items that weigh at most 1,248 pounds because that is the Sharon's maximum load limit. To fold down the third row of seats, pull the handle on the seat itself, the seat bottom will flip itself over, then fold the seat down just as shown. To fold them back up, just fold the trunk floor back, pull on the cutout to pull the seat back up, then flip over the seat bottom and you are done. Also inside the trunk, you'll find a Volkswagen first aid kit, a coat hook, some illumination, a 12 volt power outlet, and the switch for your trailer hitch. All right, and that is going to wrap up the review on the 2014 Volkswagen Chiron TDI SE. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like or a comment. Subscribe today if you haven't. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.